Amen. Well, good morning. I'd say it's like a big family reunion. Oh, it's great to just see everybody here. Some of you might be, didn't even know that uh, some people were in your church family. Now, because you haven't, you haven't seen them ever. Uh, and so it's just uh, an awesome day to get together. And that's why I'm dressed up today in a Hawaiian shirt, because the luau. And so I'm just going to have a great time. I wish we were in all Hawaii. That'd be great. Just take a plane over there, you know, enjoy it, and then come back. But uh, that'd probably be a little more expensive than $5. So just a little bit more. But uh, no, thank you, worship team. I love you guys. You guys are dismissed to go. And uh, isn't it just so awesome what they do here, just leading us into worship. I'm so thankful for them. And my wife that leads the team. Oh, they're just uh, dedicated men and women of God. And now today we're going to go back into our, our sermon series that we just started last week called Emotional Damage. And, and we're talking about how you know, the world, they're, they're led by their emotions. They're led by their desires. But the Bible says that we as Christians are not to be led by our desires or our emotions, but we're to be led by the Spirit. Yes, we know, have some people that know the Bible. It's good. Our listening last week. And we're to be led by the Spirit. And so the Bible says that when we do, though, follow our emotions, our desires, our thinking, when we follow those things that we're led by, oh, that we're actually led by the flesh. And so the, the Bible talks about the flesh, and it says that, that the flesh and the Spirit are always at war with one another. Have you ever noticed that sometimes it's just hard to pray? I mean, like, I don't think that many people ever feel like they want to pray all the time unless they pray all the time. Then they feel like they want to pray. Why is that? Because you have this thing called the flesh that, that is just at odds with the things of God. And so when it, when it comes to this, we overcome, we talked about last week, not by praying it out, even though praying does strengthen your spirit, man, but the way that you really overcome your flesh is you deny it. The Bible says in Luke 9, 23 with Jesus, he said, then he said to the crowd, if any of you wants to be my follow, you must give up your own way, take up your cross daily, say daily. That's the key, not once, no, but daily and follow me. And so we, we follow the Lord by denying ourselves, by denying those emotions, those desires that are contrary to God, and, and, and we follow him. And, and when we follow him, that means our eyes are on him. I love the verse in Hebrews where it says that we need to cast off the sin that so easily entangles us. And how do we do that? By keeping our eyes on Jesus. Well, if I'm going to follow somebody, what do I got to be doing? I got to be looking at them. I got to be focused on them. How do we overcome the flesh? We get our eyes off the world. We stop watching what the world's watching and listening to what the, the world's listening to. It, and we get our eyes and our hearts, our minds focused upon Jesus. And the Bible says that's how we overcome the flesh. Well, today I, I want to talk a, a little deeper now with the emotions. So we, we have these, these emotions that are oh, uh, emotions that we can deny. They're not controlling. We have power to say no. But then there's another kind of emotions that you can't resist by your power. You can't just say, no, I'm going to deny it. And you're able to just you know, uh, overcome it just through your own willpower. Now, that, that's not going to happen when it comes to this. There's two enemies that we face, the Bible says. There's the flesh, and then there's the spiritual darkness. You know, it's, it's a deeper form of emotions that come upon you, desires that come upon you. you know, there, there's people that, you know, you might be tempted a little bit to do something because a friend's doing something, but you don't really, it's not like a huge temptation. But then there's those temptations that come upon you and, and say you're an addict and that's all you can think about. That, that drug, you know, the, the lust of, of trying to get with somebody, the, the porn, the whatever. There's this spirit of, of anxiety, of depression, that, this anger. It's just not like you just feel like I should get, I have an opportunity to get angry if I want to or not. You no, know, this is like it comes upon you and it, it controls you. You can't really resist it. Well, this is a, a different battle that we got to face. Here, and there's, there's a deeper level of just not the flesh we have to overcome, but there's a spiritual darkness side that each and every single one of us have to overcome in, in this life. And just like Jesus you know, is real, and you have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, 
And we believe in the devil's real. And there's a, there's a kingdom of darkness that is against you. If you believe in the Bible, you have to believe in that because Jesus said, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Oh, he's, he's coming to wreak havoc on your life. And there's many people, even Christians, that, that have a lot of havoc going on in their life. And, and they might think it's just their, their flesh and it's just them. But for some of it, it's beyond that. And, and you got you to gotta know the difference because knowing the difference between the flesh and, and what is spiritual darkness is key to victory because you got to battle them differently. There, there's, there's, a, there's a difference. There, there, it's, it's a little bit alike, but there is a difference that you need to do when it comes to battling spiritual darkness, evil spirits that are coming and attacking you. And you know, Jesus preached wherever he went, and, and out of his ministry, the one th there's two things that you see that he did all the time. You know, yes, he, he raised the dead, and he, he fed people with multiplying food. That, that was on the rare occasions. But the things that he did wherever he went is he healed the sick and he cast out demons. No, that, that was just normal. Like if you went to one of Jesus' crusades that he had out there when, his, uh, when he was going around and he was preaching, that was what you saw. It was just the normal. It was just tons of people were getting healed and tons of people were getting set free from evil spirits. And then every once in a while, you'd see somebody get raised from the dead and you see food multiply, you know, and, and you'd see some crazy other things that Jesus did. And so you know, th this is normal Christianity. This should be normal church where we just are, are talking about, you know, that person got healed this week. That person got set free from, from what they were dealing with, the, the, the demonic stuff that was going on in their life from anger, from rage, from lust, from, from addictions. You know, it's much deeper than just the flesh. It, it was something that they needed to be delivered from for them to walk in freedom. And, and you know, the church doesn't talk about this that much. And, you know, I... I see why, to some extent, if you're just trying to please people and you're trying to make everybody feel good and in inspired, you know, it's easy to be like, hey, who wants healing? And you're sick, you're like, I want to be healed. You know, nobody, you know, uh, you know is, is usually af afraid to get prayer for healing. You even go on the streets and you start to ask somebody, you know, that doesn't even believe in God, hey, can I pray for you? And you just show them love and uh, you ask them for you know, to, to pray for them for a healing, and they'll say yes most of the time. But could you imagine doing that to someone and say, let me cast out your demon? No, and you do it out of love. You know, how you know that, that that would be, you know, probably not many people would say yes. You'd probably have people, you know, cussing you out, mad at you, and probably their demon would probably come out at you too. You know, uh, but, it, you know, we, we've tried to, as, as a church, just try to please everybody, and no, but the problem is, is if we just try to do that, we're not going to see people truly set free. Jesus came to set us free and set us free all the way, not just partially. And there's many Christians that are just living with partial freedom. They got their salvation, their, their spirit man is saved, they're going to heaven, but they're living a life of bondage in many other areas. Bondage in their finances, bondage in their family life, bondage in, in their marriage, bondage with a few addictions they got going on that they just can't break, but they hate it. You know, God wants you to live free. And being free means that even if you're not doing these things you feel addicted to, you're free because you don't even want to do it anymore. There's no desire to do it anymore. You know, how do you mean you know that if you're someone that used to be a drug addict, but all you do is think about it, but you're just denied every day, but you just, you crave it every day. That's not true freedom. It's not true freedom if you're just craving to, to look at porn and you're denying it, even though you're winning and you're having this strong willpower to say no every day, you're not truly free until the desire is destroyed in your life. You know, there, there's a difference between the flesh and it just pops up and, you know, hey, should you, you know but it, there's a difference between the desire that just comes upon you and it just feels like I can't control this. It has control over me. Now, the church isn't called just to be like a cruise ship. 
You know, and I, I think that it is like at times like a cruise ship. You know, we come together, we're having fun today. You know, I got the Hawaiian shirt on and some of you do too. And we're going to have a, a party and we're going to hang out with our, our church family and play games together. And God's goodness is, is so good. And there's many times as us as Christians where we just get to have fun in the goodness of God. And God wants to come and he wants to rain blessings upon our life. But the problem is that we as a, as a church, as a whole, we like to stay in the cruise ship. And we don't realize that the more important place to be, even though the cruise ship is where we're to be at times, is the battleship. That God has called the church to be like a battleship. That we got we to gotta man our post. Tell your neighbor, it's time to man or, or a woman your post. Oh, God has called us for the battle. You know, there, there's a, a spiritual battle going on for the, the souls of mankind, and it's, a, it's an eternal battle. And the, and the sad thing is that a lot of the church is just in that cruise ship, and you know, we're just cruising all the way to heaven, and just enjoy your time until we get there. But the problem is what we're losing our, our friends, we're losing our family members, we're losing our community, we're losing our nation because we're not praying, because we're not casting out devils, because we're not really healing the sick, we're not doing the things that God has called us to do. We're, we're not... We're, we're just okay not having the gifts of the Spirit. We're, we're okay if we're not baptized with the power that God has given us. We're, we're just, a lot of our, uh, Christians are just okay as long as I'm getting into heaven, that's all that matters. Oh, God has so much more for us. And so it's time for us as a church not just to be this, this great cruise ship, but we're to be a battleship for the Lord. One of the, the lies that many Christians believe and maybe even I believe this at one time when I was younger, is that you know, a Christian can't have an evil spirit attached to their life. Well, there, there's many Christians that think that, and, and I get the reasoning because they use the verse, how can light and darkness be together? Or how can they live together? Well, think about it this way. How, how can you still be sick? How can you still have evil desires, and yet you still be a Christian? Because there's light and darkness going on the inside of you. You got the flesh still it's not gone the moment you get saved. And so there's still darkness that's inside of you. But it, what the difference is, it's your spirit man. Your spirit man is made perfect. Is your spirit man, the, the deepest, most part of you, is completely pure and holy and blameless. But it's the other parts of you that got some issues. It's the body and it's the soul. You know, the, the devil, at least for the Christian, the devil cannot, he cannot own your spirit but he can take different parts of your soul and he can take different parts of your body and he can wreak havoc in those areas if there's an open door. And, and, and so I'm not just saying this because of a Bible, I'm saying this because of experience. I, I've done this. It's one of those things you don't see that much in church, but I've at least had dozens of people that I've prayed for and sometimes you, you pray for people and they just feel like something just came out of them. And nothing weird happened, and they're just like, I just feel free. I, I don't feel addicted to that thing anymore, they tell you the next week. They say, I, I don't feel anger anymore. You know, I, I just feel like a, a different person. Uh, the depression, the, the anxieties, the fears, they're just gone, and, and that's great. I, I've seen that happen dozens and dozens and dozens of times. Then I've seen the other stuff that's in the Bible. I've seen where people just start manifesting, and they start slithering around like a snake, and all of a sudden something's talking through them, and it's not them. And I know it's the thing that people don't like to talk about in church, but it's Bible, and it's everywhere in Jesus' ministry. It's everywhere in the disciples' ministry. And the only way that we're going to have freedom, true freedom, is if we preach and we talk about these things, and we make it the normal. Whereas a lot of times we just think, oh, God's going to make it the normal one day, and I'm just going to just sit here, and God's going to do whatever he's going to do. No, the Bible says that Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father, and he's sitting because he accomplished everything he needed to do, and now he's given us the baton as the church, and he's saying, it's time for you now to run. I've done all I need to do. I've given you the power of the Holy Spirit. I've given you my word, and now you need to walk it out. You need to have faith and believe, and, and whatever you say, it's going to happen. Whatever you loosen, I believe, it's like, in my mind, it's like whatever we start to preach, whatever we start to talk about, God's going to start to do. 
No, whatever we, we start to bind, if we start to bind even the things of God where we're not talking about it, we're not preaching about it, we're not releasing it, it's not gonna happen. No, there's been some incredible, mighty revivals in the past that God was moving and it was only in moves of people getting saved because they didn't believe in other things. But then there's been powerful moves of God where God came and healed and delivered and just crazy things were happening by the Spirit because they believed in that. You know, God's going to move with faith, but it's up to us to decide how much of the Word of God do we want? How much of freedom do we want? How much are we going to be willing to go out there and say, God, I'm going to even go after the crazy things. People are going to think I'm a crazy person you know, a little bit when I start talking about some of this. But you know what? Watch how many people you have coming into church that are like, you know what? I'm bound up. I've, I've, when I was youth pastor, I had so many people, and when my wife was youth pastor, so many people that were totally unsafe coming to church, and they're just like, I got a demon in me, I need help. They don't even really believe in God, but they know what they're going through. They were going so, through such torment. One guy came and said, all I can think about is killing people. Like, I just have the, this this thing in me that's just trying to get me to murder people. I need help. And it was just crazy. This guy coming to church and, and he knew that he just needed help because he was about to kill people if he didn't get help and get delivered. Oh, I had another person that came to and just said, you know what, like, this, this, this person was totally unsaved, living a totally worldly way. Oh, I totally, you know, not even, even their, what they were born with, with gender wise. And, uh, and here they come and they said, I'm willing to do anything to get free. I, I'm having all this demonic attack. I'm seeing stuff. Like it was just, they were just freaked out. And we started praying for the person and they started manifesting and we got them delivered. And you know, it's just, this stuff should be just normal church. But the world knows that there's some stuff going out there. The world believes that there's a, another side to stuff than just, you know, the big bang happened. They, they're saying right now that the young generation, a third of them are getting hooked up into new age stuff. Why? Because they believe that there's a supernatural world. But what are they playing with? They're playing with demons. You know, they're playing with stuff. So, you no, know, if a third of kids and, and young adults right now are, are playing around with new agey stuff, that means we as the church need to get into our battleship and start to say, no, we need to defeat the devil. Because right now, he's taking over our kids, he's taking over our communities, he's taking over our nation because we're just having a fun time in the cruise ship. And it's time for us to really say, no, God, I, I'm gonna believe. Uh, I, I'm gonna believe for the greater things. You know, some people can't really just be you know, set free unless deliverance comes back in the church and we start to work with that again and believe God and we're gonna cast these things off of people. We have the authority, the power through Jesus. You know, and having, having an evil spirit attached to your life, since I believe that there's people here today that have some stuff going on in, in their life, and then they might not even realize it, and they maybe didn't even believe it was even possible, but I want us to, to think of like this, is say that uh, you have a window open in your house, you have a door open in your house, and someone comes in, you know, and they just, they wanna live in that area, they start stealing from you in that room that's open. They don't own the house. There's just a window, there's just a door open. Well, some of us have some areas in our life that we have some windows and doors open into our life. And how does the devil come in? He comes in through sin. Oh, he, that's how he comes in. He's legalistic. You, know, you, you can have as much of the devil as you want in your life. And, and, and that's why it's so important for us as the Christian. And I believe this is why the devil fights the church so hard when it comes to holiness and, and fights you uh, so much when it comes to holiness because if you live a holy life, he can't touch you. If you live a pure life, he can't get in, but the moment that you start to open the door up to sin, oh, and you start to, so that might be some of the, the junk that you're watching, some of the stuff on shows nowadays, you, it's like a portal you know, from hell, some of these shows. Like, it's just amazing how much witchcraft is in shows and how much sex is in a lot of these shows and how much of just wickedness is in that. You gotta watch it. Like, me and my wife are really watching now what we watch. 
Like, it's, it's not like we just watch whatever. Like, 20 years ago, you could watch most things, you know, and it not be that bad. Now, you can't watch hardly anything, and, and it not really mess you up. And I've, as a youth pastor and young adults pastor, I remember just people coming to me back in the past and just being like, I was watching these horror movies, and, and now I'm having all these nightmares, and can you pray for me? You know, what was happening is that as they were watching that stuff, stuff was getting attached to their life. It was an open door that they were making with some of these movies that they were watching, with some of these things that they were listening to and music. And so we need to to really get real about and and for real about uh, holiness and godliness and and shut the door on these things. And what are some of these doors look like that we open? Unforgiveness is huge. The Bible says that he won't forgive you unless you forgive others. That, that's, a, that's a tough one, and we probably don't talk about it enough, but you know, if you have unforgiveness in your life, it opens up the door wide open for the devil to come in and wreak havoc, and not just on your soul where you start to feel maybe anxieties and depression and anger and, and all these different things that start to just go crazy in your life, but it can also be in your body. The Bible is talking about with Jesus, sometimes he would heal people just by laying hands on, sometimes he would cast out the spirit of infirmity out of them before they would get healed. So not, not all sicknesses are an evil spirit, but from the Bible, it shows us very clearly that there are some, maybe even a lot, that are some kind of evil spirit was attached to that, and it needs to be cast out first before the person can get healed. And so, you know, you, you have people that, that have dabbled in witchcraft. If you want to have evil spirits upon your life, that's a, that's a for sure way. No, not every time you sin are you going to get an evil spirit upon your life, but it does open up the door. You know, and the more you allow it, the more you make it a practice in your life, the wider that door gets, you know, I, I believe. You know, and when it comes to witchcraft, when it comes to worshiping other gods, other religions, it's like almost the for sure that you need to get delivered. There's something there. There's something also that gives access to your kids also because the Bible says there's generational curses. And there, there's some people that you know, stuff got in through their family line that they got to repent of and they got to have broken off their life before they can see complete freedom. Well, there, there's some that, things that we've opened up through sexual sin. There, there's some stuff that we've opened up through. You know, one of the, the ones I saw a ton with people when I was youth and young adults pastor was pornography. Just all the time, people just coming, hey, I, I need freedom, I, I need help, this is just controlling me, and, and then just pray for them and break it off. But the problem is if they went back to it, they would get messed up again. But, uh, but I just saw people all the time coming and getting prayer because they realized it worked you know, for this. And they could only break it off through prayer, not by denying it, like how you deny your flesh. They had to get it cast off their life. And then you have uh, many other things like greed and just being really full of materialism, it can open up doors to the devil to enter into your life. And so when it comes to sin, it's a lot like this. The Bible says about the devil, it says in 1 Peter 5, 8, it says, stay alert, watch out, for your enemy is great, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour you know, there's two things that you can really get off there. And I think sometimes just people say, oh, it's just the devil and he's just loud towards Christians and that's all he can do is just be loud. No, that, that's, that's not what that's saying there. It does say the one that he is loud. How many of you ever have had the devil loud in your mind? Like you're just thinking crazy thoughts. You're thinking thoughts of that addiction. You're thinking, you know, that... Uh, I'm a terrible person. You're having all this shame. You're having all this guilt. You're having all this anger. You know, the, the devil can come and he can be like a roaring lion at times. And it just feels like the temptation is just really loud. But then the Bible says that he's prowling, he's prowling a lot around looking for someone to devour. So that means that, you know, he's just not roaring only. He, he's looking for someone to devour, and so it's like at the zoo with a lion. Have you ever been to the zoo before? You look at the lions, what beautiful animals they are, and uh, you know, you're, you're safe as long as you're outside of the cage, right? You're, you're totally safe, but if you were to jump in that cage, you know, all of a sudden, you're not safe. I don't know what's going to happen, you know, it, it, but you're probably, it's, it's probably not going to be good for you. 
You know, you're probably going to get eaten. And, and I, one thing I know about the devil is this, is that he's, he's way more evil than you think he is. Now, I know we've, we've made him into cartoon characters and all these shows, uh, looking like the devil is just this fun person, and he's really not that bad, but he's way more evil than you can imagine. You know, he doesn't sleep, and he's just waiting, the kingdom of darkness, waiting for a chance to devour, the Bible says. And, and so, you know, it's the same thing is true when it comes to us, is that you know, we are safe from the devil when we walk out a righteous life when we live a holy life, when we're following the Lord, when we're not practicing sin. You know, do you mess up and then you get back up real fast? Yes, and I don't think that a lot of times there's something that enters into your life with a little tiny mess up that you had for a second there. But I believe it's more when you start to practice sin, you start to allow it in your life. That really just opens that door up to the devil and, and it's like me walking into the cage with the lion. Awesome. That, and then we like to blame God. God, why did you allow me just to get destroyed? God, no, this is all your fault. I thought you loved me. I thought you cared about me. God's like, didn't I warn you in my word not to do that? No, there, there is consequences to the things that we do. I know we live in a world that they want to tell you there's no consequences of anything. You can do whatever you want, whatever you feel, but that's just not true. There's consequences to sin, and it opens up the door to the devil in your life. You know, Jesus even said this when he was talking to some people. After they had been healed and delivered, he said to one of the guys in John 5, 14, he said, but afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and told him, now you are well, so stop sinning. Or something else even worse may happen to you. Oh, well, here he, he just set someone free and he said, no, now stop sinning so something worse doesn't happen to you. And, and so he did this out, out of love, not as a, a warning. Some people just like to say, oh, I, you know, you're, you're telling me I'm going to hell if I'm not saved. You're telling me if, if I live a sinful life, you know, that bad things are going to happen to me. It's like, I'm not doing that to just be like, I want to see bad things to happen to you. I want to, I want to warn you because I love you. It's like me telling my kids, don't play in the street. No, there's going to be consequences to it. God is a good, righteous God. He doesn't want to come and, and, and hurt you. He wants to love on you. He wants to bless you. He gives us these restrictions because he, he wants to bless us and wants us safe. And so living a godly life is just so key to our walk with the Lord and true freedom and I've done a lot of deliverance with people over the years when it comes to praying for people to be set free, when it comes to Christians, when it comes to people that weren't really saved, but then I say, no, you need to get saved first before I do this. You know, healing's for everybody, but deliverance is just for the Christian. No, healing is for everyone. You don't have to get somebody saved first before you go and you pray for them to be healed. Just pray for healing and it's a sign and it's a wonder to show them that God is real. But when it comes to deliverance, it's really important that you make sure that they really want to follow Christ and they're for real about it. You know, I had this one girl that was in with my wife at the time of the young adults ministry and she came in and, and she was living a totally uh, worldly lifestyle and, uh, and, and so she came in and she's like, no, I, I need deliverance. And, and she was, she was a, a girl dressing like a guy and all this you know, other stuff in her worldly lifestyle was going on. And so she came to church and was like, I want God. No, we weren't like telling her, oh, this is wrong, and, and, and it's all up in her face. No, this was like the Holy Spirit was speaking to her, and she's like, no, I want to get right with God, and I need help, and you know, I got stuff going on. And so we started to pray for her. You know, she started to manifest, and uh, just crazy stuff even happened. That's why you need to do with other people at times. Then she thought she should start taking off her clothes. She started acting a little crazy. Like, this was just stuff in the Bible. Like, demonic stuff was starting to, to take hold of her. You know, and speaking through her, and, and, and you know, eyes rolling in the back of the head. It's not quite as like, I think, probably the, the horror movies you might see. But it, it's, it's a little bit there, I'm, I'm sure, with some of the stuff. And so this is going on, and, and we cast it out of her. And at the end of it, she's like a different person. You wouldn't even think that she was the same person. And, and she, from there, she, she starts totally living for the Lord. Totally different and how her lifestyle was 
dressing like a girl and just starting to, to like guys. And it was just so cool to see what God was doing her, the joy, the freedom. Like she was just like bouncing off the wall. You know, have you ever been there where you just got set free from the Lord? You just got saved and you're just like bouncing off the walls because you're just like so excited because you just are experiencing such freedom. And here she is. She's telling everyone about it. She's up on Instagram and then come to find out a few months later, she's hanging out with some friends and they're playing the Ouija board and they're doing like tarot cards and she's thinking that, no, I can live for Christ and I can play around with the devil. And before she knows it, she's worse off than she was. And she had so much freedom, so much joy, so much life. It was just so awesome to see. But she went back to just thinking that I can live however and I can keep my freedom. And I'm telling you, if you go back to the world, I, I don't care how much freedom you got. I don't care how much you think that God is, is good and he's going to protect you. If you go and you willfully start to play around with the devil, you're going to get bit by the devil. No, he, he, he's, he's a bad guy. He's not going to just be like, oh, I'll just leave you alone. I, I, I'm not really feeling like I want to hurt you today. No, he's going to hurt you every time that he has the opportunity to hurt you. And, and so it was just so sad to just see that girl just totally, her spiritual life just totally destroyed in a moment and even had like a hate towards God at the end of it. Why? Because she opened up that door for the devil to come back into her life. The, the Bible says this. And we're going to pray for people here today before uh, we go out. And I just was thinking, I just felt like the Lord was putting on my heart. You know, as we are celebrating our freedom as a nation, you know, we're going to be celebrating also our freedom, you know, spiritually, what God's going to do for people here today. And I'm excited for that. And we have a deliverance team at the church here that has been really just praying and believing and, 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 uh, and meeting a couple times a, a month. Uh, and uh, they're going to be praying for here today. So I'm excited that we got powerful people that, that are ready to pray for people and know what they're doing and been trained. And uh, the Bible says this, and this is why it's just so key for us to, to live a godly life. And, and before we get prayer, and I know that there's some people here today you know, that want some freedom. There's some just depression. There's some anxiety. If I could have the band, or at least the keys right now to, to come, but the whole band is going to come too. And you know, there, there's some of you that are just struggling with anger to a, to a level that just, you know, it's beyond you feel like you have control over. Some of you are just dealing with nightmares all the time. That, that it's just beyond what you can handle. You know, this, this isn't normal. That you just feel like there's all these bad things that are happening to you all the time. Your body is just so messed up, you know, and you just feel like, I, I just need help here today. There's, there's freedom here today in Jesus and but it's important before we pray for people, number one, that you've given your life to Christ, and number two, that you're really serious about following Jesus. Because Jesus said this in Matthew 12, 43 through 45. He said, now when the unclean spirit comes out of a person, it passes through waterless places seeking rest. What does that like, look like? I'm not sure because that's kind of like the spiritual world and we don't really see that part of it. But we're told that it's looking for some water, it's looking for places to be able to dwell, but it's going through these water list places, seeking a place to rest, and it can't find any place. And then the Bible says, then it says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, it finds it is unoccupied, swept, and put in order. Then it goes and brings along with it seven other spirits more wicked than itself, and they come in and live there. And the last condition of that person becomes worse than the first. So there, there's something that, that's really key here is that the Bible says that that spirit goes out and then it can't find anywhere else to go and then it tries to come back. It's looking for an open door. And the thing is, that it's finding an open door because what's going on here is it says that it's swept and put in order. So that person's life looks better. That person's not dealing with that anxiety, that fear, that anger. That person's not dealing with maybe those nightmares anymore. Uh, there's, there's freedom in that person's life. But the problem is, is that it's unoccupied. There's nothing there. It needs to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You need to be filled with the Lord. You need to really live for the Lord. You need to start to be a person of prayer. You need to be a person of worship. You need to be a person of the Word of God. You need to fill your life with God. You know, if the Bible said it and it was occupied, 
How many know when the devil's going and he's knocking on the door, seeing if it's unoccupied, and Jesus opens up that door, he's not coming in? Oh, he got no chance. But, you know, he's looking and he's seeing, oh, did they, they fill him up? Do they really, do they really, do they really go after Jesus? Or is this person like many others that just wanted freedom without Jesus? And I'm telling you here today that freedom is here. I, I'm preaching this message here today, and this is not a message we preach all the time, but I, I really just believe that God is wanting us to go to a different level. God wants to change the way that we do church. Now, we're to be like a, a battleship also, just not like a cruise ship. I want to be like a cruise ship also at times. I don't want us to all be, oh, all just every single moment, you know, where we're just can't have any fun also. No, because I believe that the walk and the, uh, of walking with Jesus is a fun life, but also it's a serious life. It's, it's serious. There's, there's people that need freedom. There, there's people that need healing. There's people that need to be set free from evil spirits. You know, there, there's people that need to be reached for the Lord all around us. And so it's time for us to get serious about this. Let's just stand to our feet here today. And if I could have the, the deliverance team and the people that I asked to pray and some of the pastors, elders too could, could pray also at the front. And we're going to have them up here ready to pray for you and if I could have you guys pray in groups, at least two. All the prayer people do in groups of two, so find someone else that can pray with you. But what we're going to do is, I want to do this first, is, you know, like I said, with healing, you can get healed today, and you don't even need to know the Lord, and, and, the, and the Lord comes and he heals people just to show them that he loves them and that he's real. But this is what I'm talking about here today also. When it comes to deliverance, you have to be saved or we're gonna wreck you even worse than you were before. And I've seen it before with certain people that we've done this with and it's sad. And we did the right thing of our side to making sure that they gave their life to Christ but they didn't really follow through and they were worse off now because the Bible says seven evil or wickeder spirits come into that person if they, they leave their house unoccupied with the Lord. So I want to do this right now and everyone just close your eyes, bow your heads. If you're here today and you want freedom today, but you're not right with God, but you have to get right with God first. The Bible says that we've all sinned and we've all fallen short of the glory of God. What does that mean? It means that none of us are good enough to get into heaven. None of us can have a right relationship with God on our own power. It's only through having faith in Jesus Christ because what he did on the cross, he died and he rose again so that we wouldn't have to die. He paid the price for our sin. And if you're here today and say, no, I want to receive that, we receive that free gift of salvation, of life that the Lord has for us by putting our faith in Jesus. It means that we just don't just believe that he's real, but we live for him. We follow him. And if you're here today and say, oh, I want to follow Jesus. I want to put all of my faith in him today. Whether it's you're someone that, that has followed Christ and you've walked away or you've never followed Christ before, this, this is for you, this moment right here. On the count of three, I just want you to slip up your hand if that's you. One, two, three. If that's you, just slip up your hand here. Or if you say, I want to get right with God today. I want to know that I know that I know that when I walk out of here, I'm good. I want to get free here today, but I want to make sure that I, I'm, I'm right with the Lord first. I see your hand and you can put it down. I see your hand. Praise God. You see your hand, you can just put your hand down as you put it up. I want to pray with you here. Repeat after me, and if you already prayed this prayer, let's just pray with him. Dear Jesus, I'm a sinner, and I need you. I believe that you died on the cross, and you rose again for me. And from this day forward, I give you all of my life and all that I am. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, praise God. Let's just give them a hand. We're so excited for you and you walk with the Lord. It's the best. It's amazing. Oh, it's just not just I'm good for heaven now. It's no, you've got a relationship with God for the rest of your life and all of eternity. Oh, if you're here today, what I want to do is if we, could about, if we could have the house lights come down a little bit like how we do for worship, Tony, in the back in the production. If we get the house lights down and, and we're just going to take a little bit of time here and if some people need a little extra time, no, oh, then if you can stay here and then go to the picnic afterwards. We're going to be hanging out for a while. But I want everyone, all of us, just to stay here for at least until 1130, which is five minutes. And we're going to have some worship going on. But if you're here today and you're struggling with anything, 
that you feel like it's just beyond just some little tiny temptation, but you feel like, though, there's some things in my life that I really don't have control over. They have control over me, and I want to be free. Don't miss your chance to be free. This is your moment. There, are, there is power here to set the captives free because Jesus Christ has died on the cross. He rose again, and he's filled us with the Holy Spirit. And so if you're here today, you say, no, I, I, I need some freedom from lust. I need some freedom from, from anger. I, I need some freedom from, from the sickness and disease. Come up. We'll pray for healing. We'll pray if there's any evil spirits of infirmity there, we'll, we'll cast them out. Well, we're going to believe God for your total deliverance. And whatever there is, you know, we want to pray for you here today. And let's just worship the Lord and you know, come forward and, and let's get free here today, truly free.